Hey guys, it's that time already. Yes, banless time. When are we getting it? I don't know. It's freaking TCG list, so you never know. So it's July, maybe July, maybe August. I don't know. Uh, usually I would be putting up a banless prediction around this time and generally I like to get my brandless predictions up early. But, uh, I don't know, this one's tough, this one's tough. Are they gonna do like maybe a small list for maybe nationals or maybe not do a list and wait after nationals? Generally we get that big fall list, I'm not sure. So, uh, I, do, I do have kind of a ban list prediction, but for now I decided to go ahead and just do top five cards that should be hit that Konami probably won't hit. So, I have my ban list prediction, I really do. I, I'm looking at it right now, I have my ban list prediction, but there's some cards that I was kind of like, should these cards be hit? Yeah. Will they be hit? No. And I didn't put them on there. So none of these cards are on my ban list prediction. So uh, I thought it would be a cool, fun video to do. So, uh, you know, some of these cards are much worse than others, of course. But I'm just going to go down the list. I think in this particular order. I think from, I think from uh, not as bad, like it could probably be okay not getting hit to like, yeah, it should definitely be hit. But... I doubt Konami's gonna do it. If it does, then hey, hey, awesome. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. So starting off with number five, I have Brilliant Fusion or Gem Knight Seraph Knight. So this is starting to become an engine. Starting to become an engine, it's pretty much always been an engine. So it's additionally unfair, especially in Extra Deck Monarch, where not only are you fusing from your deck, which is a big no-no here at Yu-Gi-Oh, I mean, be kind of seen, but you're also sending the, uh, you know, Light Monster to the graveyard, and whether it be Trick Clown or Damage Juggler before it got banned, or uh, your I your idea, or in the near future when you start sending some of them ABCs, it just seems like we're just set having a foolish burial. If you're playing Burning Fusion, you have a foolish burial for light monsters because why the hell not? And that's not, that's just the tip of the iceberg of how unfair this is. So, so it's like, wait, wait, let me get this straight. Your fusion monster that sends from the deck to graveyard a light monster. Hmm, sounds like Construct. Yeah, yeah, and where's that at? So, that's already ridiculous, being able to be like, hey, you know, I have, I can Foolish Light Monsters, so that's totally fair. Like, if this Foolish Dark Monsters, we would already been on this card's dick, but because it's Light Monsters, you know, it's debatable in the community whether it should be hit or not. Some people say yes, some people say no. Uh, personally, I'm in the book, this is, yeah, but uh, then the, the next thing is, what do we hit? Do we hit Brilliant Fusion or do we hit Terephronite? All right. So, the whole combo, the whole Brilliant Fusion, and they're like, well, this Rush Curse is the ward, you gotta play a shitty card like Garnet. I mean, he's a 1900 normal monster, it's not terrible, but it's not something that you wanna draw. But the possibilities you have are pretty much basically ended. That's like saying, like, oh, well, you know, if you run Foolish, but then you have a risk of drawing the light monster that you wanna Foolish. It's pretty much the same thing, you know? You have a risk of drawing Garnet, yes, but in exchange, you get to run Brilliant Fusion, which means you take a fuse from your dad, send that light monster, summon this level 5 monster, which of course can have shenanigans, uh, pretty much like an Insta Fusion target at that point, depending on what you're going to do with it, whether you exceed with it, use Retro Deck Monarchs, Tribute, uh, whether you go ahead and Synchro with it, or if you actually have a level 2 tuner, <coughs> Gofu, uh, you can go ahead and make Ultimate Tzokin, and yay, everybody loves Ultimate Tzokin. Uh, spoiler alert, Ultimate Tzokin's not on this list, you know? I do think Ultimate Tzokin will get hit eventually, but it won't be this list, it won't be this list. So, yeah, I mean, there's the Shannies. Oh, and of course, the double normal summon, because uh, that's freaking awesome, too. So, overall, this is just way too powerful an engine to just be thrown in. It's really splashable, really flexible, and of course, with uh, with uh, kind of hitting upstart goblin only was it to prevent your whole chicken uh, race FTK, but uh, never to prevent some of that cookie cutter shit. And uh, what's really cookie cutter? All right, just throwing in freaking brilliant fusion in almost every deck. Let's see them. So... Uh, I can definitely see uh, Brilliant Fusion getting hit, but then probably not, you know? So, uh, it's between those two. Uh, definitely, it would either be Brilliant Fusion Limited, which would, you still have the ability to do it, but it would just lower the consistency of it, so it would kind of like be a fusion for, uh, I mean, a foolish for light monsters that you only get once, so it would pretty much be a foolish. Or, Serephronite ban, which I think that, uh, that would be the correct answer, banning Serephronite. Uh, that way, of course, Brilliant Fusion, that would still be at 3 for Gem Knights, which, you know, would really appreciate that card, but don't really, uh, you know, abuse Serephonite as much as other decks do, where it's just like Serephonite or Buzz. If Serephonite gets banned, not only are you not foolishing any light monster, but the additional level summon that Gem Knights generally don't take advantage of, but other decks would, 
uh, is not there either. So it's another one of those Instafusion versus Norton things, uh, and I was for the Bam Norton and leave Instafusion at three. So once again, I'm with Bam Serephonite, leave Brilliant Fusion at three. So I don't know, but yeah, that was number five. Moving on to number four, we have Cosmotown. Uh, yeah, Cosmotown. Yeah. Uh, should Cosmotown be hit? Yeah. Should will it get hit? Probably not. I don't expect anything in Cosmos to really be hit for the July list because it, you know, the July list is generally the smaller kind of list. I mean, uh, almost all of Konami's lists are kind of, but uh, it's a smaller list that generally doesn't do too much. Cosmos aren't going to be at World, so TCG Konami will probably be like, eh, we're not going to go ahead and hit Cosmos. Leave it till November, earn a little bit more money, and then we'll go ahead and hit it. So, you know, maybe outside of like maybe indirect hit, maybe emergency teleport to one, I seriously doubt I see, uh, you know, Cosmos taking too much of a hit. Now, can I predict a hit that they would get? Yeah, sure, but, you know, I can I can easily see them just not getting hit. But a great hit would be Cosmotown. Like, Cosmotown is so safe, so safe. It, 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 it just, uh, just you know, protects you and allows you to go in. Like, Cosmo Town is not, it's like a Cosmo condom for them, you know? Like, all the effects are so good, so good. Uh, you know, Cosmos with their lower end and their upper end, you know, and having to have a combination of them both to really do well, they can easily dead throw. You know, it's kind of like with Monarchs. They can, if you don't have the right combination of cards, you can easily get a crappy hand. But uh, let me go ahead and press that reset button. Go ahead and put them Cosmo Monsters back, reshuffle them, draw them to the cards that you shuffle back. Is that cool? Like, so it gives you a reset button, of course, to go ahead and get your Banished Monster, so that's just safe as hell. Like, uh, uh, when you're doing against a Cosmo, there's a huge difference between facing Cosmos when they don't have Cosmo Town and when they do have Cosmo Town. And it's just so safe. And of course, uh, when it's destroyed, you can go ahead and add a Cosmo card, including its freaking self. So you don't even want to touch that Cosmo Town. You know, uh, you know, limited to one. Some people say banned, but maybe you limited to one just so you can't search for it. Like, I will gladly go ahead, take the neck, destroy your Cosmotown, go ahead and search. You know, that's fine. You know, it, I mean, it's a powerful effect to go ahead and get something back from me destroying the fill spell because generally it's like, hey, get rid of that fill spell, it's gone. Okay, whoo, thank you, God. But at least you get a search, that's fine. But you can't search for it again. Once I get rid of that Cosmotown, it is gone. And I would really appreciate it if that was the case. So yeah, Cosmo Town would be a great hit. That would be uh, that would just remove their their safety line. It would just it would just be like, hey, 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 take that condom off. I'm going in. Like, oh wait, hello. <laughs> Where am I going with this? But no, Cosmo Town sh should it be hit. Sure, will it be hit? I doubt it. I doubt it. I don't think that Tommy's really looking at that. You know, they're definitely probably looking more at Dark Destroyer and Can Can Emergency Teleport cards like that. But Cosmo Town, that would be that would be a great hit. All right, moving on to number three, we have Pendulum Call. Pendulum Call. How does that card not get hit? <laughs> like, I there's a, there's a chance. There's a chance of getting get hit with set precedence from the street. They have one pendulum call. But then, of course, you also gotta look at the other end. What does Kami generally hit? The deck set top. Has anything using pendulum call really top? No, not really, you know? Uh, top four decks, none of them really pay pendulum call. Just maybe some variant of Draco Power, maybe that poem deck. But, pendulum call? <laughs> it's a ridiculous card. I mean, it's a one card pendulum scale. I, I really think they should be limited. I pretty much put it in the same boat as Scout and Monkey Board. Well, it's just like, well, it's technically two cards because it's this plus the card discard. It's not like the card you discard, it's a specific card. It's just any card discard with this one card, i.e. pendulum call, you get your two magicians, you know? That's like that's like arguing that there's a huge difference between two MSTs and one Twin Twister. The Twin Twister is going to do the job by itself with the discard as the cost. So pretty much there's a difference between drawing the two pendulum scales and this card discarding any random card and getting the scales itself and of course uh you of course cannot pop your your opponent's pendulum scales uh for you know till the end of your next turn it's just like it's just a pain in the dick you know and it seems like if we do all these hits that you know you get you generally get that you gil snowball effect TCG Konami kind of did it last time, but they were kind of like, alright, we hit Perform Pals, but then they're like, oh, well, if we hit Perform Pals, then they'll go to Magicians, we'll go ahead and hit Insight or Wisdom Eye down to one. And it's just like, okay, where's Pendulum Call? And they're like, nah, Pendulum Call, that, that, that could be a three. I'm like, what? No, 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 no. Like, Pendulum Call, like, that, I think that's immediately what they would turn to. With enough hits to, like, Draco Pals, they would just turn to more a the Magician deck. Uh, base deck, and of course you already know magicians are power. I mean, their pendulum scales are nice. Their their pendulum effects are nice. Uh, the plusing is nice. The searching is nice. The everything is nice. So you know that's nothing to scoff at. You know, Skyrus is nothing to scoff at either. So 
Uh, I was actually surprised if this card went unhit in TCG, but will it get hit? I mean, like I said, there's there's nothing to show for it. I mean, unless Konami just wants to straight up be like, yeah, you know, it hasn't topped, but maybe it will. So maybe we'll go ahead and hit it the one. But, you know, just from what we've seen from Konami, where it's just like, if it ain't top, don't hit it. I could easily see Thunder Call skidding by on another list, not getting hit. And then when they hit all the other Thunder based shit and leave this, then it'll come back and bite everybody in the butt. So, you know, if not this list in July, maybe November. But, I mean, this this isn't a card that can stay at three. No, no fucking way. No fucking way. There's a threshold. And when we cross that line, people are going to be like, oh, wait, Pendulum Call is a thing? Let me go ahead and throw that card up in my deck. Let's go. So, mm, all right. Uh, moving on to number two, we actually have two cards in this position, and it actually has to do something with the Pendulum Call shenanigans, with your Magicians being that upper scale eight, and of course with uh, Metal Foes being that upper scale eight as well, the Pendulum Scales. Uh, for number two, we have Magic Spectre Keating and Apex Avion, because they're pretty much in the same damn boat. So, there are these powerful monsters, of course, and generally they're gonna, you have to go through hoops and summon it, just like Magic Spectre Keating's like, hey, well, I'm level six. My Magic Spectre group, they, they don't Pendulum Summon that high, so if you want to summon me, you're going to have to Tribute Summon. But then there's just like, hey, we're upper scales, we're generic, we can just go ahead and summon the Keating for free. And, you, are, I mean, come on, come on, you're watching this video, you already know the Keating's a son of a bitch to get rid of. Like, unless you're playing Kaiju's, you're probably not getting rid of that Keating. It, it's going to wreck you. It can't be targeted, it can't be sure by card effects, and it, it can bounce itself. You know, it, it's, it's ridiculous. So... Keating should probably go ahead and get hit down to one. It really should, you know. We shouldn't be able to have just three Keating go ahead and throw it, especially with uh, Metal Fellows coming out and that power and that shenanigans, you know, Rotten Day and all that shenanigans. We've been seeing that in the OCG, so just go and throw in triple Keating. And, of course, with Pendulum Call still three, you got your Magicians throwing uh, Magicians with triple Keating. I mean, and it's a lower scale, too, so you can go ahead and slap down the Pendulum Scale as a lower scale if you need to. Like, all right, all right, Keating should probably get hit down to one. Now, if we hit Keating down to one, then people are just going to go ahead and run to the other uh, partner in crime. I mean, I'm sorry, Miss Valleys, but Apex Avion too. I mean, before the Pendulum mechanic, no one's, I mean, was saying shit, you know? If you want to go ahead and play your ninjas, you want a super transformation, your ninja into Apex Avion, yeah, that's a son of a bitch, but, I mean, sh no one cares. No one cares about that. Now you can just go ahead and just poop it out on the field from your hand with the Pendulum Summon. Of course, it's going to go ahead and negate something because it's a solemn... Judgment S Monster 2700 BDS, nothing to scholar, that's over the attack bear. Negate, turn back to the hand so I can be Pendulum Summoned again next turn to go ahead and negate once again. It's like, it's like the, the added effect of Keating and Apex Avion, which you, you would think that, you know, bouncing itself back to the hand, no, I mean, but it still counts as resources, whether it be in the hand of the field, it's gonna get re Pendulum Summoned to do more shenanigans. You know, there was actually a duel where my opponent literally played Pendulum Call, got his Pendulum Skill, and Pendulum Summoned Apex Avion and Keating. Scoop! Like, like, no, 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 no. So, I think both of these should be limited. Like, both of these cards should be limited to one. And it sucks that we have to do that, but, you know, the, we got, you have casualties. When you have a powerful mechanic, like the Pendulum Summon, where it's just like, yeah, go ahead and summon monsters from your hand. Sure, you know? You got that Pendulum Scale? Eight, summon that Apex Avion. Summon multiple Apex Avion. This effect isn't once per turn. So, if I go ahead and Pendulum Summon three Apex Avions, I'm just going to your shits. And... And I, you know, it's not like I die, I'm just going to right back to hand and pendulum summon back next turn. Hopefully you got your second Solemn Strikes. Oh wait, that card should be hit too. So, uh, yeah, yeah, these two, definitely. Kidding and Apex Avion should both be limited down to one. At that point, they would probably just be staples and pendulum based decks, but at least their consistency would be lowered. Now, Kidding on the other hand, I mean, we would probably see you at the power of Kidding. Uh, we'd probably just see people throwing in some of that, uh, some bumpkaboos just to get to search for the Keaton and stuff, but hey, I mean, that's, that's another thing to deal with, right? But yeah, at least cards should probably be limited down to one. Lower the consistency of opening them and less shenanigans with the, with the pendulum scales. Because uh, I seriously doubt that generic eight pendulum scales are going to die out anytime soon. Because I'm just going to make more pendulum scales, and whether it be the Magicians, whether it be Metal Foes, or some other new crap that they come up with, there's going to be some pendulum scale, and Keating and Apex Avion are going to be right there, ready to go ahead and be uh, exploiting the pendulum summon and summoning these boss ass monsters. So that is number two. All right, so number one. Can anybody guess number one? Anybody? Anybody? All right. I mean, I guess we can do some quick honorable mentions, but I seriously doubt anybody will guess it. So um, you're thinking maybe I want to see if I can get in your mind. You're thinking Gem Knight, Seth, uh, Seth, or Brilliant Fusion? No, that's not number one. Uh, Dante? No, no, that that could possibly happen. So no, no, no. All right. Uh, uh, I don't know. Sound Strike, Twin Twister. You know, I don't know. 
I don't know. No, no. Number one, number one hit is Big White Bitch. Ether the Heavenly Monarch. Yeah, that that bitch should get hit. Yeah. Uh, and this one, this one, I, I I seriously doubt it. It would be a great hit to Monarch. It would be a wonderful hit to Monarch. Uh, of course, uh, we have precedence for Nosuji. They have Pantheism at one and Domain at one. And are Monarch still doing some shit over Nosuji? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Uh, pantheism, no if and buts about it. I swear to Christ, if, if TCG Konami does not hit Pantheism, I will kill someone. I, I, I will go, you will see a new mastery goes to jail over killing someone, and, and, and I'll be like, they didn't hit Pantheism. And they'll be like, you know what? You know what? That's a justified reason, you know? So, uh, that, I'd be totally fine with Pantheism going down to one. Now, the other one that, you know, you could probably be like, hmm, should they really hit? Domain. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, we have set precedent that OCG hit domain, but especially now, and I'm, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm, I, I, Konami looks. They see, they, they're looking. They know what next for topic. Domain monarchs don't talk. They're like, domain monarchs. The hell is that? It's all about the extra deck monarchs. And you know, the powerful thing about domain is locking you out of the extra deck. But extra deck monarchs are the ones that are topping, so they're not locking you out of the extra deck. Most of them what they're doing is what? Running one domain to drop their level 8s to level 6s? If that. So, there's one domain. So even if we limit domain, extra deck monitors only play one domain. And what they're doing in the OCG is one domain and still doing fine. So, that's, that's not the sniff. I mean, if they want to, but then nah, that, that's not an okay hit. Uh, uh, you know, some people say tenacity with you know, Pantheism and Tenacity both have one that super lowers their consistency, so that, that's not a terrible hit. Uh, some people argue Monarch Storm Forest. I mean, that card's pretty powerful, just non-targeting, tributing your shit, quick play spell card. But, ah, uh, quick play spell card. So, I I, I activate the, 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 the Monarch Storm Forest on your turn, but I, I can't tribute during your turn. Uh, so, what's the point of it being a quick play spell? I can't tribute during your turn. Oh, right. Big white bitch. <laughs> like, she is such such a threat. Such a threat. Like, you're doing this, Monarchs. They get those cards set up. Like, if they get that Pantheism and they got that white bitch in hand, you're getting fucked up next turn, you know? Especially if they got that Prime in the game, right? Because, of course, then they could just chain it all, you know? They're like, oh, chain Monarchs, turn force, and then here's the Ether, and then go ahead and summon the Prime. I'm going to tribute my Prime. Tribute your shit during your turn. Tribute your shit during your turn. Like, fucking forget the power of Monarchs, turn force. You've been able to play it on your turn. Tribute your shit, my shit during your turn. No, you can tribute my shit during my turn? Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, because big white bitches, they just decided to go ahead and have it so she can be tribute summon during your, during your opponent's turn. All right, all right, and of course, with Monarch Storm for sure, because it just happens to be a quick play spell, tribute your opponent's shit during their turn. Awesome. Uh, so that effect is great. Uh, the sending the two Monarch spells in traps, that's great. Like, that, you call that a fucking cost? Like, but send Prime, send Pantheism, let's go. Like... Okay, then not only they're gonna ban the Pantheism and get a search next turn, but Prime is in the graveyard for more shenanigans. I guess I won't be attacking you directly for game because that Pantheism is just gonna keep blocking and keep blocking and be used for tribute fodder. I mean, let's go, you know? And of course, go ahead and throw in maybe like a quick draw with the Prime and go into Ultimate to Zulkin. We can talk about Ultimate to Zulkin's bitch ass later. You know, I seriously doubt they're gonna go after him, but I don't, want, I don't think Ultimate to Zulkin would be on my top five. But it, it would be in my top 10, definitely. Top, top, top 10 shit that I should probably hit. It's my Tzolkin. Now that's another thing. So, the 72 Monarch Spells and Traps, that's good. Go ahead and summon a monster from your freaking deck with <laughs> Monarch Monster. And whether it be another one of her, so you can go ahead and get set up for more plays shenanigans next turn. Yeah. Or, you know, the, the big dark nigga who will go ahead and pick something out of your hand on your field, non-targeting, spinning back to that that's power. Oh, good thing that Ether can go ahead and summon it from him from the deck as another 28 beads that you're either going to attack with, and then return to the hand. Oh, no, the monster returns to the hand to be used for freaking later. Or let's go ahead and summon that Kroz. Yeah, is Kroz being used properly, you know? But, I mean, let me go ahead and spot pop during your turn, you know? Something that definitely wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for fucking white bitch over here, so... Yeah, she should probably be limited. <laughs> Will she be? I don't know. I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. But God, that would be a great hit. Like, this would be... Like, if I saw Pantheism and this down to one, I'd be like, yes. Yes, good job, Konami. But, no. Yeah. So, like I said, she has some shenanigans. Like, if there's anything in mind, it's Pantheism and her. So, there you go. And, uh, yeah, that's it, people. So there is my top five, even though there's technically six, but two cards shared the same second place because they're pretty much in the same boat. My top five hits that Konami should do that they probably won't do. Like I said, 
are these hits that they, they, they should do? Sure. What they will do? No. And they're not high enough and uh, predominant enough for, and strong enough for me to, you know, put them on my balance prediction. So, I'm not sure when and if I'll do a balance prediction, but I thought this video would be fun to do anyway. So, yeah, here it is. <laughs> so, in the comment section below, go ahead and tell me your top five cards that you think that Konami should do, should hit, should hit. But they probably won't. Like, like don't do not do obvious ones. Don't be like, alright, well, you know, uh, yeah, I think that they're gonna hit, like, Dante. Like, yeah, there's probably a pretty good chance that they'll hit Dante, you know? No, do do obscure ones like I did, where it's kind of like, you know, will they? I don't know. I don't know, you know? So tell me what you guys think about this top five list in the comments section below. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And, uh, and like I said, if I do a balance prediction... I'm not sure when. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. It's looking fine, but I'm just not sure. You know, it's Konami. When when's it? When, when do we uh, get this ban list? I don't know. It used to be easy. Just be like, hey, this is the end date. All right, I'll do my balance prediction a month before that. The the you know the actual update of the list. I'll get my balance prediction video up early. Awesome, great. But now it's just like, oh, well, whenever Konami feels like it. It could be tomorrow. It could be next week. It could be a year from now. It could be on February fucking 31st. We don't goddamn know. It's goddamn Konami, right? So, uh, yeah, I am done with this video. So thanks for watching, thanks for all the support, and I will see you guys next time with more of these ban list videos. Thanks for watching.